Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with the Aerospace Structure Series. This video is going to look at solving a simple problem for evaluating stresses. We're going to start by learning to calculate the properties of the section. This is a repeat of our statics information of getting section properties. And then we're going to calculate the stresses at a couple key points. We're going to walk through this for an example problem in a step-by-step -step fashion. Let's take a look at how it works. So if we're given a stringer, let's say we have a J stringer on an aircraft. This is a typical, very typical aircraft section. And it's dimensioned like this, and we have a moment applied to the, the section. So we know all of the dimensions, we know what the loading is, and we want to calculate the stresses at a couple of key points, like the uppermost surface and the lowermost surface, point A at the bottom and D at the top. We're first going to need to calculate our section properties. The way we do this, we start by resketching the section and identifying each element, being careful not to double count for anything. You can see we've numbered the sections 1, 2, 3, starting from top to bottom. By numbering the sections from top to bottom, you will find it easier to, when you create your table, you're going to number your sections 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you number from bottom to top, you'll find bottom to top and they're numbered in your table differently. So if you number them from top to bottom in your sketch, then when you list them out from top to bottom in your figure, they will match. Now, on the other hand, if you number from bottom to top, then we start with one and in your table, the number one will be at the top and you'll tend to make more mistakes. So number your sections from top to bottom and then put it in your table. We want the width of each element and the height of each element. We see our first element is 0.8, our second element is 0.1, our third element is 2.2. Then we identify the height, which is 0.1. And then we say 1.4 minus 0.1 at the top minus 0.1 at the bottom. So it's 1.2. Our last one is 0.1. Where is the Y bar? The first one is right there at 1.4 to the top minus half the thickness. 0.05 is 1.35. The next one is smack dab in the middle of the section. It's 0.1 plus 1.2 over 2, which happens to be 1.2 inches from the bottom. And our Y bar, uh, our Y bar of that is, uh, excuse me, happens to be 0.7 inches from the bottom. Our Y bar of the last one is just 0.05, half its thickness. Then we calculate the area by multiplying our B times our H dimension for each element. We sum up the areas and that's the area of the section. We multiply each area by its Y bar and populate that column of our table. Each A of 1 times its Y bar and so on, sum those up. That's the first moment of the area about the bottom, or about our reference axis. Our, mo our uh, Y bar, our centroid of the section, is just the sum of the AYs over the sum of the As. And you see we calculated that there. Our next column takes each area and multiplies it. So for element one, the area of element one times its y bar mine, excuse me, y times its y bar, which is yi in our table for element one, minus the y bar of the section, which we see down below, and square that. That gives us how much moment of inertia is contributed by that little area not being at the centroid of the section. When we do that for each element, we sum those up, and that's part of our moment of inertia. We then calculate the moment of inertia of each little element about its own axis, which means element 1, 112BH cubed, and do that for each of the others. We sum that column. We add up the summation of the A times Y minus Y bar squareds plus the sum of the i's, and that's the total moment of inertia of the entire section about its centroid. This is the key thing that we need for doing our analysis. This is the area of the whole section, the y bar of the whole section, and the i of the whole section. And we need these to calculate our stresses. 
Now we're ready to identify our stresses. We want to decide whether we want to use right hand rule sign convention or beam sign convention. If we use right hand rule, that means a positive moment. Now I'm not showing my axis, but generally we're going to assume our axis is positive edge to the right. As we see with right hand rule, that means a moment will be a positive right hand rule moment will be have its axis about that with a thumb pointing down that axis. Therefore, our stress is just MC over I, which is M times Y minus Y bar of that point over the I of the section. Notice our first point, we're looking at the bottom point A, which is at zero of our reference axis. So we can plug in Y of zero into our equation and calculate our first stress at that point. It's the moment times the Y position of that, which is zero minus the Y bar of the section divided by I of the section. We rewrite that number with proper significant figures showing the sign positive or negative or a T and or a C for tension or compression with proper units. Then we do the same thing for point D. That's located up at the top at 1.4. We go through the math and show our stress. When we're all done, we look at our answer. We have identified each answer with a numeric value, which is showing proper sig figs and units and sign. I'm showing this as sign is negative and positive. We could have also shown that instead as C or T for tension and compression. We box our answers if this is a student problem, so our answer stands out from the rest of our work. We check our work, and now we have completed our analysis. Simple, elegant, and used every day in industry. Enjoy.